How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you five ways to create an array in JavaScript. Now, if you are an experienced JavaScript developer, stick around because you might just learn something from these techniques. The first and most common way is to use an array literal. I'm sure most of you have already used this before. We can simply say const array is equal to, then you can provide any of your initial elements, for example, one, two, three, and four, and it's gonna create that array right there of four elements with each one of those values. Now, there is an, al an alternative that is similar, and that is by saying something such as, I'll say const array one, equal to, then you can do a uh, new array and then just say one, two, three, four, like this. It's gonna give you the exact same result as we can see, but I think honestly, there's no reason not to just use the, uh, the more simple uh, array literal syntax. Okay, next on this list is array.from. Now, array.from takes an array-like object and then converts it into an actual array. This is useful when you want to call array methods such as filter or map on an array-like object, but of course it is not an actual array, so you can't do it. Okay, now what I mean by array-like object is an object which has indexes on it, so you can get uh, part of the object by index and the object has a length on it. So those two requirements, one, indexable, two, um, it has a length property. Okay, an example of this might be a string. Okay, let's say const username equal to decode. Okay, I'm then gonna say username at index one. This here gives me C because in this list of characters, index one is the second item in the list giving me of course C right there. So this string uh, I can access an item by index that is the first requirement satisfied for this to be an array-like object. Secondly, I can say username.length, okay? This here gives me five. So there's a length property. The second requirement is satisfied. This here is compatible with array.from, all right? Uh, other common... Um, other common uh, objects might be something such as a node list, which you may receive if you do uh, a node or element dot child nodes. You receive a node list and you may want to perform a map or a filter, etc. But sticking with uh, the string here, I can now say as an example, array dot from pass in here the, uh, the username, okay? Just like this. And we get an array from the username, an array of each one of those uh, individual parts of the string, okay? So now I can do things such as uh, this array dot map or dot filter. So you can apply those methods. Now you may have also seen, uh, if I was to do this, you've also got iterables here. So this here is also very useful. I've got a whole video dedicated to iterables. If you're interested, I'll leave it linked uh, in the top right corner of this video. Next, we've got the spread operator. This here essentially gives you a shallow copy of an array, effectively creating a new one. So right here, I'm gonna say const uh, array equal to one, two, three, four, just like we did earlier on. And let's say I wanna make a copy of this array, a shallow copy. I can say const copied equal to, then say dot, dot, dot array within square brackets, press enter. Now copied is gonna be a copy of the first array. If I was to say copied.push, let's add the number five to it. Then I'm gonna log out copied and we get the fifth character there, or sorry, the fifth uh, element. If I log out array, uh, just like this, there we go. It still contains only four elements. So the copy was successful. Again, keep in mind this here is a shallow copy. If you require any deep copies, you're gonna need um, a different method to do that. And by deep copy, I mean that if you have objects inside your array as elements, then copying the array using this technique is not gonna copy the objects, it's only gonna copy the reference to them. So uh, yeah, be careful with that one. I've got a whole video dedicated to uh, copying by reference versus uh, value as well as how to deep copy. So if you're interested, top right corner of this one. Next we have array.fill. This one here allows you to create an array and then fill it 
with a certain value. Let's have a look. So let's say I want to make an array of uh, 10 elements and they all contain the number five. I can say array, right? Then immediately use the parentheses there. So start a new bracket. Then I can say 10. This here is the length of the array. If I was to press enter right here, it would simply just make an array of 10 items, but they're all empty, okay? But I wanna then say dot fill. This here is quite a common approach, which you might find online. Now, if I say dot fill and then I say uh, five, that's gonna give me my array of 10 elements or 10 items, all containing the value of five. Press enter and there we go. This is quite straightforward if you want to populate it with simple uh, primitive types such as uh, string, number, boolean, etc. If you want to make an array of objects, you need to do a little bit more. Let me explain why. Let's say array 10.fill of an object instead. Press enter, we get the desired result. It looks like an array of 10 unique objects. The thing is, they're all the same object. It This is a similar sort of problem to what I was explaining just before with that spread and the shallow copy, right? Because this object was simply taken. So this object is created right here when you use fill, it makes the object, then it just simply puts that object in each one of those items. It's the same object. So if I was to say, uh, let's just make a new constant for this. I'm gonna say uh, array like this and copy all of this here just so we can have the um, a reference to it, right? And I'm gonna say array at index zero. This, uh, this is the first object in the list, right? I can say dot name equal to decode. Press enter, log at the array, expand this, and they all have that name because they're all the same object, okay? One object, 10 references to the same object. So to fix this problem, what you can do is you can say array 10, again, dot fill, choose any value you want. I'm gonna use undefined. You can stick with the empty objects if you like, it doesn't matter, because after this is done, we're then gonna say dot map, okay? So we're gonna call this function right here on every item in the array. So every undefined we have, we're gonna call this function. This function is going to simply return a new object just like this. Let me expand this down, okay? This function is gonna return a new object. Press enter because this function runs 10 times for every undefined we initially had, it's gonna run this statement and make a new object every time, okay? So going back to the example from before, I'm gonna make the array. I'll just refresh here, copy this line, just so we um, you know, can, can start fresh. Array at index one dot name equal to decode, log out the array, and now only, well, the second uh, index there has that name. So that is why it's important to, of course, use this fill then map method, as opposed to just saying fill than empty object. And last but not least, we have the object.entries function. Now, this function uh, is on the object, uh, global object, <laughs> and uh, it lets you convert an object into an array with its keys and values. Let's make a new object here called uh, person equal to, then say here name, uh, decode, and we can say here age 42. All right, press enter. Now we're gonna say object.entries, then provide person. Press enter, and it's going to take the array, sorry, take the object, and make a new array element for each one of those key value pairs. We can see here, the array has a length of two because there are two properties. Inside here, it's a second array, as the first position. This second array in its first uh, index has the key, second index has the value, okay? And the same goes for the second property there, 
key and value. So you basically get a multi-dimensional array or 2D array of the uh, person object. Now, this has come in handy a couple of times before. Uh, I think I used this when I had to uh, convert or uh, convert an object into a URL query string, I believe. Uh, that the query, sorry, the URL object or the query params object accepts a, a 2D array and not actually an object for um, its uh, constructor or something along those lines. So this does come in handy in those situations where you need to essentially pass a, um, a, a, a key value pair array as opposed to a normal JavaScript object. You've also got things like object.keys, which if I was to call it again on the person, you get a single dimensional array here, a standard array, uh, just containing the keys. So name and age, once again, comes in handy in those really specific, unique situations. It's hard to think of a good example on the spot, uh, maybe for computation, if you're generating some sort of hash or things like that. It can be used now object.values, I can say person, so values is the same thing as keys, but it's gonna use the values instead. Decode and 42, just like this. I, I feel like the values is used more than the keys because the values may be used to uniquely identify an object in a list or something like that. And that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.